This is the Rebel Scum Podcast. Available in video on YouTube and audio wherever you listen to your podcasts. Every week, Brock and James talk the latest rumors, news, and theories from a galaxy far, far away. Support us on Patreon for exclusive offers and join the Star Wars discussion. Patreon.com slash Rebel Scum Podcast. Here are your hosts, Brock and James. You are always scum. Rebel Scum. Rebel Scum Podcast. I'm Brock. This is... Rebel Scum. James. James is James. Boom. James. Boom. Like, I feel like I've mastered the proper way to point at you, but now my big issue is when I do it... I, I my hand is off camera. I know that in my I I'm like you are to the left of me because when we used to do this together, you were always to the left of me. Ah, oh, right. So I just have yeah. to remember you were always here, always here. Remember, so remember when we first started doing, started doing live streams and I wouldn't have you on the right side of the screen and people <laughs> let uh, we got like thirty views and twenty nine people let us they let us have it. <laughs> they were like, uh, guys, wrong side, wrong side. <laughs> but where we are, better than ever, we can even do high fives. Oh, <laughs> boom. Yeah. <laughs> In glistening 4K, Rubble Scum Podcast, <laughs> let's talk Star Wars. I... Hi, Heidi. Hi, Heidi. Always Star Heidi Wars. is here. I did not finish watching Bad Batch because uh, I had a busy day, but things are happening. What what yeah. have you? Oh, so I didn't see Bad Batch either, but what a wild ride. <laughs> Two episodes to go. Actually, I heard this one. What I have heard, um, because, you know, I still kind of like to pay attention to what's going on, even though I don't, I can't see it. Um, I heard that this week's episode was kind of... Uh, just kind of like meh it was kind of like bleeding into the last two episodes so i don't think this if this were my first one i'd probably be like i don't i don't know what all the hype is about people this was i don't know if it was weak or not um i I, but i I think it was just like a probably like a a traditional episode that didn't really it didn't blow your socks off which apparently the rest of the season has yeah no i mean it's been a good season so it's just like it's hard to judge now. It's like, I wonder if this would have been better as just like a binge watch. Cause I'm like, maybe you would go through it faster. I don't know, but yeah, I got to watch it. Heidi loved it. So that's a glowing review. I, I saw someone comment. Re- I was it the, um, whoever did the Scott Pilgrim series on Netflix, the animated mm-hmm. series on Netflix, the creator of that or the show of that ever commented like how he, they thought that, that was like, Dropping them all at once was a crazy idea, and and they they uh, compared it to X Men ninety seven, saying like mm. just imagine if X Men ninety seven was all at once, it wouldn't be the same, yeah. it wouldn't have the same impact that it has. So, I, and this goes back to what we've been saying for like a few years now, though. Brock, is some shows I think are meant for weekly, and some you know I think the later Star Wars live action, yeah, I've been almost like these would work better as one solid uh one big long episode basically like binge watch so i think i think we're in an era where we got to rethink maybe some are and some aren't and maybe netflix netflix will never do it but amazon prime did it with fallout i haven't seen fallout yet but there's got to be a reason why they felt that the need to drop them all on one day whereas everything else has been weekly on that service yeah yeah, it's very interesting how they choose it. I feel like when they it, they make it, they drop all episodes. I feel like they have they have minimal faith in it. Uh, that they're sort of like, I don't know if it's worthwhile to spread this out. It would probably be better just to drop it all in. Like they do that with like some of the Star Wars things, and it's just like, okay, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, if you, anyone listening to us knows that we love the episodic, we love waiting for the next episode. So, yeah, because I'm not, I'm a two episode max person, anyway. 
even if it's the half hour ones, I'm yeah. a two episode max. I I I kind of lose. I we I start Aaron and I started watching the Godzilla show. I told you we started watching the what's it called Monarch Godzilla? Monarch. We started watching uh, Monarch Butterfly, and um, it was it was a cool show. But we wanted, the first night we we had to be up late, so we were watching it. And or we no, we weren't supposed to be up late. Whatever, who cares? Uh, we were trying watching it, and we got to one episode. Then we put on a second episode, and the third episode started, and I was like gone. Like I just walked. <laughs> I checked out. I was like, I just walked away. And I was like, okay, let's finish this. And Aaron, she doesn't like it when I say this, but she's like all in on binging sometimes. Mm-hmm. And this one, she she's she really likes this show. So she was all in, and I'm like, I'm. I can't do this. I'm, I was enjoying it too. Don't get me wrong. Like I was like, I, the next day I'm like, I really want to watch the next one. But that night I was like, I'm over this. Let's go. And they're only like forty episode, forty minute episodes. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. And I, I put, I told you, I put that one on because it was significantly shorter than Fallout. Yeah. And I, I wasn't sure I was going to get through forty minutes, let alone seventy five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah. It's weird. It's it's like. Some things you can just digest, like, immediately. Uh, like, I watched all the Fallout in a day, basically, or, like, yeah. a 24-hour span. Uh, Ace, Ace Face Place, actually, in the chat, has been watching Fallout and also likes it. But, it's, yeah, it's interesting. Like, I Monarch I liked as well, but I think it took me maybe a week or two to fully finish it. Because they're yeah. longer episodes, and you do have to pay attention. Because there's a lot of time jumping in that. Uh, a lot. But... But yeah, it's it's. I think that's why I kept bringing it up when I was watching it. It's just like this is an insane premise where it's like they're constantly trying to run from a monster of some sort. But it's just like it's still good because it's like if there's a human, there's a good enough human story. It's great. So it's like it's just interesting. And like Fallout, is it, is it life changing? I don't know, but I loved it and I thought it was true to the video game, which is nice. So. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, in, and yeah, of course the the outlier that is X Men ninety seven episode five, which is like phew, new episode came out yes today. Yeah, today's Wednesday, and it was like oh okay, it's exactly what I thought it'd be. It was like it was good, but it wasn't episode five good. But like, do you really want to be like whoa yeah. up and up and up and up and up <laughs> like so? Actually, it almost there's mention of the prior episode, but it almost goes off in a totally different direction. And you're like, okay. Well, it's uh, you know at least um, because again, if that was a binge watching show, then the, yeah, the, the, there would be like an immediate like, I don't I don't know what happened in episode five, but whatever happened that was so big that everybody's losing their mind. That's so wild to me that it hasn't been spoiled. Like, because everybody on my timeline has been talking about it. And everyone's just been like, that's life change. That's amazing, right? That's, da, 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 da. And I'm like, I, yeah. what are you talking? I don't even know what you're referring yeah. to. So kudos to the fans of that show. But like, whatever it was, if you're binging it and then you have the next, then it's kind of like, it's a blip, right? But when you have a week to process it, yeah, it becomes, it becomes an event almost. The episode ends with like a black screen and one of the characters talking and it's like, I don't think that sits as that doesn't resonate with you as much as it would if all of a sudden next episode, right? Like, yeah, yeah. like I watched it with Reham on Saturday, and I'm like, you have to watch it. It's like, but I didn't watch the one before. It's like it doesn't matter. You, you, <laughs> the episode prior is it has nothing to do with what's happening right now. And she was like, she was over uh, when it was always just like, what was that? <laughs> like, yeah, so. It's a. I highly suggest that show when you get time. Uh, did you? I can't remember. Did you, did you watch X Men like the original cartoon? Oh yeah, I, I live. Yeah, it. yeah. I, I yeah. live. Yeah, I watched. I watched all the time. That's oh yeah. Spider Man, yeah. Iron Man, Fantastic Four. They were all on it. What else yeah. Is There's some good stuff back then. That was before the MCU made them all cool again. <laughs> when it was still <laughs> Marvel Studios. <laughs> it was still Marvel Studios. Yeah. No, I used to. I had an X Men uh, video game. For the PlayStation, that was I think it was the same voices as this show. I could be wrong. I could mm. be very wrong. I was excited when I saw X Men One in the theater, and the voice of Beast yeah. drives a truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it drives Rogue. Yeah, when I was like in the theater, like yeah, and I was like, <laughs> oh, that's not my friend. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Can I make a Star Wars pizza? I'm Ace of Face asked. I did. I made a Star Wars yeah. pizza. I'll make one this year, but I made one last year from May Fourth. It is a BBH shaped pizza. 
Uh, by the way, shaped pizza. Like I'm not a decorator, Brock. Like a food. De- I'm not a food. I'm not even a cook or anything. But like deck, like shaping things in food. Yeah. Kudos to the wonderful people who do that because it is not easy. I, I tried a couple of times. And every time I just start like swear. I don't show this stuff where I swear, but usually I swear, mm-hmm. and and it turns out like a like a bag of poop. And I'm okay with it because it's so difficult to make anything look like anything. So yeah, but I did on um, oh for me, lol. Okay, uh, X Men I said. So, yeah, that's funny that you mentioned that the pizza comes up because I do- I saw something today where someone made a Death Star pizza where they mm-hmm. obviously it was round, but they like cut up the pepperonis to show the yeah. segments and the thing. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, that was an idea. Um, that I had last year, not that I had, but that I saw that idea. So yeah. I was considering it. And then I thought of all the pepperoni you needed, all the work cutting the pepperoni. And I was like, I'm just going to eat this pizza anyway. I don't know. <laughs> I can't do it. I just can't do it. Uh, hello, General Dale's here, Skyward Academy. Say, so, okay, Brock, let's talk about this. The big news of the week that happened. Actually, there's two things. One of them we got in it. We're going to do in the odds. So maybe we'll save it for that. But let's talk about this Disney Plus TV channels that they're doing. Mm. You haven't heard this yet, but no. Apparently, what they're doing is is they're. I'll let you know my initial thoughts and my thoughts, and then then you can go. But I think like so, what they're doing is basically at some point they're going to have channels on Disney Plus. So yeah. Star Wars Channel, Marvel's Channel, Pixar Channel, I imagine. Blues Clues, I don't know, whatever the hell they own. Simpsons Channel, you, how do you not have a Simpsons Channel? Yeah. Like that You would have like seven years running without ever repeating on a Simpsons Channel. So you do all that. <clears throat> so that's their idea. Uh, it's the, um, they're doing it like Pluto TV is like that. There's some services like that already. Yeah. And it will be scheduled programming. <clears throat> so like at 7 p.m., Bad Batch, 8 p.m., Mando, like that. And then there's, they're going to throw in commercials, which is, I think, the – I don't I, – I'm, I, believe, I believe everyone, the, 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 regardless of what you're paying for, you'll get commercials on the mm. – t- I could be wrong on that one. So my initial thought was – that was my initial, th- initial thought. It was kind of like, okay, so you're, they're going to take TV, put it on there, make me pay for TV. Because I'm still – I'm like, all these subscriptions are really adding up. So I'm like, okay, that was my initial thought. But then I remember – um netflix a few years ago i don't know if they still do this or not i've never experienced this i don't even know if it went past the beta stage or not people who watch netflix one way let me know they started doing a remix thing on netflix i don't know if you remember this but basically it was like if you can't think of like if you don't know what you want to watch you click like this remix function yeah and it goes bam here you go you're going to watch and you're like let's do it and so i thought about that and I was like, I remember when that happened, I talked to our friend Dwayne. I'm like, this is dumb. He goes, no, it's great. I don't know what to watch. I'm like, okay, from that perspective, okay. So I started thinking about this. And I was like, you know, it actually kind of makes a lot of sense. Because you, how many, like, are we all make fun. We all have reels online. Make one, well, we don't. But we're making fun of it takes longer to find the movie to watch than to watch the movie. Because we, there's so much to go through on all these things. But if you put on, if you're like, I'm kind of in the mood for X and you go on on Disney Plus and there's an X channel you put it on and it's just going to play them and it might, I mean, okay you're like oh the one I want is the one that I really want to watch is on oh right then at 10 o'clock I'm going to come back in like 10 minutes or, or whatever so I kind of I, I, I don't know if it's something that I would use often I think I would check it out but I think I think the idea uh, even though it is basically cable on it I think it's actually a great idea that's going to be very successful for them yeah, I mean, the like it's it's already kind of set up in that way because when you're on the yeah. main page, there's Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, National Geographic, and Canada Star, but I believe in the states it's Hulu. They're like the top five boxes underneath like the main banner. Like it's like so basically you'll pl- click on that and you'll either be brought to the page you were before, and then there's like a live thing. Actually, the, what the smart thing would be, the top banner should be the live channel itself, and you like what you see there, you click on it and watch live. But this yeah. isn't overly surprising because I think Netflix is already making moves on this. Didn't they have like a live award show, like like the Writers Guild or something? 
and I think that that dinner time show is actually live. Like, I know there's a bunch of things that they're showing that are like live, like TV. So Disney Plus definitely has to do it. And we already said it this episode. You and me love episodic, so you're actually yeah. putting a time time frame, uh, not time frame, time slot for these episodes to drop. I mean, when they moved ahsoka to like nine o'clock on wednesday like that was awesome because it was like oh okay okay great yeah like it's nighttime i'll watch it so it's like i'm all for it i i hope they're creative in a way that will like draw you to actually watch the show at a specific time maybe they'll get creative with it but as long as like they you could do either or but yeah, like uh, what you were saying about the remix from YouTube is like, yeah, like I don't know what I want to watch. And that was one of the nice things about terrestrial TV. You're like, I'll just put on a channel I like and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and that, it was funny because um, I used to watch a lot. Of, I think you know, I used to watch a lot of TV like 15 years. Like I used to, I, I used to watch a lot. Now I don't watch like almost any TV really because mm. as I don't watch – like I don't watch cable so much, like so I don't know what's on in any channel. And then the streaming stuff is just either I watch something that I've seen a million times, or there's something very specific that I want to watch. There's, yeah. I never really. <clears throat> this is my mentality, but like I've never gone in and been like, oh, I'm just gonna. F-. I, I just never am interested in just finding something at random, for whatever reason. For whatever reason on these streaming, it's just not the way I'm geared. Probably because, like, but on TV, I'd be like, I'd watch. I'd watch like. Batman's on, but it's on the French channel. I don't care. I'm watching Batman <laughs> in French tonight. Like that's how I was. But but on streaming, I'm like more like select. I'm like, nope. I'm in the mood for this. And if it's not there, I'm watching, you know, Jaws. And that's that's just how it that's just the way I'm geared right now. But that's a great point where TV used to be like, oh, what's on? Well, that's how I got into how I met your mother was it was just on like all the yeah. time. And I was like, Well, I guess I'm watching this show now, and then I became a fan of that show. If they're really smart, they'll put some kind of chat room with every show or something that where people can interact while watching TV. Because it's like that was part of what watching TV in the 90s was like. You would you might watch by yourself, but like if you're our age, our demographic, you were probably watching it with your family or your siblings or your parents or whatever. It's like because at between seven and nine every pro- everyone's probably in the family room because we didn't have computers so it's like you could recreate that vibe for people that are just watching alone you could create a community i mean look at the community we've created on youtube that'd be kind of neat and then like maybe you engage with people they're like hey do you want to watch this now and we can chat about that like i, I i'm sure like disney plus is like eh, we do not want to get into the chat room sort of things but but they kind of they have that the 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 group watch option though, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, which I mean, I don't know. They, they seem they seem on the ball with that. Yeah, you. I forgot about that too. When we used to sit together as a family, yeah. and watch TV. At TGIF, you would be like, "We're watching this," and my dad would be like, "These shows are terrible." And we're like, "Stop it, Dad! We're watching. We like the theme songs." And you sit yeah. there and watch, and like you know, The Simpsons was like a like. I, I haven't watched the Sim- I haven't watched The Simpsons in like twenty yeah. since before the movie. Like I've seen the movie, but before the movie, I like. But we every Sunday we used to sit down, and if we weren't around, if I had baseball or something, we would tape The Simpsons and then watch it like the next day or something. Like that was like a, a thing that you did back then, and then you would all talk about it. And that would be nice if we could get something. And that is missing. I don't know. Do we need Dave. it? If they're smart, they'll try to create a whole block of programming that you want to watch. So it's like, maybe it'd be too tricky if it was within each channel itself. But like, if from like 7 to 10 or 8 to 10, whatever you want to do. I mean, it's easier with like 30 minute shows, but like perhaps from like 7 to 10, you have three shows. Maybe it's a Marvel show, maybe it's a Star Wars show, and then it's something else. And it becomes your TGAF, your must see thursdays your sun sunday animation block on fox it's like i i I mean i mean there i didn't even think about that like disney plus owns family guy simpsons what else i think uh oh god what's that uh bob's burgers like all those shows just take the fox model and put it out 
That's you. Have, there's your thirty minutes, and then like Hulu can just absorb the idea, and we'll watch it on Star here in Canada. So on Saturday, it's like I mean. We talk about it all the time. HBO is like the last bastion of yeah. that mentality of like, we will give you your shows, but they will be on Sunday and you will watch between here and here. It's like, just steal the idea. Who cares? So it's like, we don't need to be revolutionary, but like, yeah, like if, if nostalgia sells right now, it, this will sell hard with our generation. Yeah, For me, the ah- Ahsoka was my favorite of the Star Wars shows to watch because it was at nine o'clock. I mean, I would have liked that maybe like an hour earlier, but it was nine o'clock. Yeah, and you know, I'm like, and I, it's on this day at nine o'clock. It's not this day at midnight this time zone, but yeah. three a.m. our time. Like it was just like nine o'clock, six o'clock, whatever. But it was like I got to like actually have a time where I can watch it because I kind of the other one. Like, look, I love Mando. Don't get me wrong and everything, but like it was so annoying waking up and like. Some people have seen it. Some people haven't. I'm like, yeah. I don't know what I'm going to, like, when am I going to get to watch it? I don't know. Yeah. You know, it's like, so you can't talk, and you can't talk to anybody about it because some, you know, it's just like, uh, but when it was Ahsoka, it was like, it was comforting. You're like, okay, I, I think we've all seen it now. We all watched it probably around the same time. And if you can't watch it at nine, you can watch it. At, like, at least it's not midnight where it's like, yeah. You know, I'm sleeping until hopefully a good hour in the morning and then yeah. I'm up. And then, but then when I'm up, I got work to go to, yeah. so you know it's like I'm gonna watch it when I can. But yeah, I, I, this this idea is, um, I mean, I guess they they probably won't have the new stuff on there right away. The only thing that would be th- that I'm thinking though is because the time of the show, the Clone Wars, first few seasons would work beautifully. Yeah, I don't know how many commercials they're gonna have. They'll have less commercials, I suppose. So maybe it won't be as beautiful. But like the timing's gonna be off. Like, I'm wondering how they're going to fill gaps. If, are they going to have like, are the shows going to air at like at seven, eight, nine, seven thirty, like that, or is yeah. it going to be like at seven fifty one? No, it won't be seven fifty one, but like seven fifty, seven fifty five. So I'm wondering about that. I don't think that's going to throw people off much now, anyway, because time is TV time is different. Like you said, like when we watched TV before, it was like eight p.m. We got to sit there and watch it, but now it's mm-hmm. we watch it when we want to watch it. Which is half like HBO's fault with like their or, you know, uh, what's it called? Uh, no pay per view's fault when they were like you pay for it, but then you can pause it if you take yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't, it should be interesting because it's like I hope they take the opportunity to maybe make more like talk shows, like talking about the things you like to watch. Because it's like, like Disney Plus is different from a TV channel on cable that we're used to because. Like an NBC, ABC, or in Canada, CBC, CTV, uh, Global. Those were channels, but also had news, events, daytime soaps, daytime game shows, daytime talk shows, and then your prime time, your cartoons on Saturday. So it was like, they did multiple things. But right now, the streamers are like, just here's a, here is a archive of all the things we put out. Right? And, like, we thought it was revolutionary when Netflix started doing, like, episodic. So it's like, you can only watch it one at a time, and then Disney Plus definitely has embraced that. So then, if we are moving back towards that terrestrial TV vibe, will you... And it, and if it work, if it grabs people, I bet they won't do it immediately, but if it grabs people, if the viewership goes from, I'm watching whatever I want, to, I will watch what you tell me to watch... Then they could implement, you know, uh, great uh, like shows like The Walking Dead show where they would talk after or Talking Dead, you know, like those types of shows. Throw those out. Those could be live. Those could be interactive with the viewers because it's it's a streaming thing. So internet is not an issue here. <laughs> so they could do that, right? And then that's what you fill in your midday with, right? So like, I think you still like you said. We need to keep like the new stuff that we're excited for at the end of the day. And that could be your Ahsoka, your Mandalorian, your uh, what's the Marvel, what's the big Marvel show right now? I'm like, I guess Loki. Uh, but then like it could do like a Saturday morning cartoons block where it's like yeah, Tales of the Jedi and what if. So, like, but if people grab onto that, it could be good because then we get more stuff made, right? Because it's like, 
Tales of the Jedi and What If can only go for maybe a couple weeks. So then do you make a whole bunch of new things and just I, I don't know. I think it would it'll be interesting because if it takes off then it'll be a weird it will be a interesting vibe of watch what you want when you want and wait for the new thing. It should be interesting and it's like it's a no brainer because it's like, well that didn't work, we'll just go back to the old model and it costs you almost nothing. <laughs> Here's a question: Do they, but maybe they do they time it out so that the new thing is on both channels, like it's on streaming and it, like they, they drop at the same time? Can they? I wonder how hard it would be to schedule that. I don't think it's hard at all because HBO was doing that with Game of Thrones, where it's like you could watch it in tandem. Yeah, no, I remember that because I remember once like I was late for Game of Thrones, but I was watching it on my phone while driving, like listening to it, and they got the car, and it was like we were watching it at the exact same time. There was like zero delay, so it's like that already exists. I uh, assuming you have HBO, right? Like it's so, it's not hard whatsoever. Like I don't think I don't I I base this on nothing. It's just my experiences. <laughs> so I, I think I would uh, I would check out that channel but i believe they are doing like a soap opera channel like one of the soap opera shows that's going to be all that all the time and i wonder if it would be beneficial for them to like mix genres like if they were like like because i actually i think about saturday morning cartoons especially since having a, a kid like saturday morning cartoons often because i used to live off of saturday morning cartoons like i used to when i was a really little kid like four or five i probably shouldn't say this but Whatever, my parents get mad. But I would wake up at like five thirty in the morning, yeah. pour myself a bowl of cereal, get yeah. ready, sit down, be like, "Oh, look at this." There'd be like church on. It would be something on that you're like, "Why this?" Whatever. But I know what's coming next, and there's gonna be four hours of awesomeness after this. I remember one year. Oh man, Brock. One year, I woke up. It was like five thirty in the morning. Turn on the TV, and I had. I have. I, it was after Thundercats like was done for me especially for me i don't know about tv but for me it was done like i was over thundercats it was probably like late 80s like probably just before ninja Turtle time thundercats came on at 5 30 in the morning and i was like oh damn this show's amazing i was like eight i'm like this show is still amazing <laughs> and, but i think about like how awesome like we had droids and ewoks like saturday morning cartoons it would be like how awesome would it be if disney had a saturday morning cartoon yeah. block and but it was only saturday morning like i don't know streaming kind of takes it away because you would have that all the time but it would just be fun like because the other thing with saturday morning cartoons that i think a lot of people forget and i a lot of people never grew up with is there was like hosts of the shows like they were like they would they would host like yeah. that four hour blow two yeah. hour block <laughs> yeah. and then like there'd be sometimes it'd be like real people sometimes it'd be like claymation people but like it was like the whole thing was a show and then you watch the cartoons within the show and it's like that would I don't know. It's it, get get on that Disney. Let's. How about you guys start that? <laughs> the, the model is already exists. Like yeah, you're totally right. I forgot. Like Saturday morning would it would either be a live person or there'd be like commercials that would give you a vibe of yeah. like we're watching. It's like you are watching the Doug yeah. and then Recess is next or whatever. And it's true. It's like it's kind of something our society's missing where it's like. It, this is dumb, but my wife's a teacher, so I do tend to think about this. Kids today need structure, and one of the things our generation learned with structure was like, okay, the cartoons are on from this time to this time, but you have to watch it in this order. But they're there, and you can watch for as long as you want, because it's Saturday, and nobody needs to be anywhere. And you would do that, because you're just like, yeah, sure. like Because it's like, you're selling something that we want. So you've, you've got us already. So like show it in any way you want. That could work. Oh, it does work. Like it's, it's just like, uh, it maybe I, maybe I don't like season two of clone wars, but I'll watch the episode. If the next episode is like, Oh, the rebels one rebels, like just using those, those are bad examples, but you know what I mean? Like it's like, it's a whole new block of things. And then the thing is, it's like, Disney Plus has control of all the content. Like, I don't, there's never like a cross stream, if that makes sense. So it's like, you'd be like, okay, so you're in this block at 10 o'clock on Saturdays. Talk to the 10 30 show and like, hey, what's your story about? 
maybe we, I mean that's TGIF when they would go to like Disneyland and Steve Urkel would show up yeah. on the step by step like it's it's all they're not new ideas they just don't do them anymore and it's just like it's a no brainer so it's like if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't but it could very much work because it's like we're both getting excited about it because we're like oh yeah our nostalgia vibes are coming in it's like endorphins are going off in the back of our head like we just like had sex so we're just like oh yeah remember that <laughs> is it are you is it because i said sex <laughs> yeah i have to now i have to edit it out uh oh. trivia question for you what was the very last i haven't googled this so i could be wrong but this is from memory what was the very last saturday morning cartoon to air like officially last saturday morning that was of like Saturday morning, not like a all cartoon channel. Because uh, like that's where it gets murky. Because it's like, when does Nickelodeon really become a thing? It's not Nickelodeon. So like on general cable. Yeah. Not Doug. Not, not Doug. I want to say something in the era of like, uh, what was that one show where there were like skateboarders, weekenders, or something like that? But yeah, yeah, yeah no. Uh, so it? I can't find it, but I know. But I remember when <laughs> it happened. It was Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Saturday morning cartoon. It was the very last Saturday morning cartoon to air. Like, ever, or like in the rotation of. In like I believe of all like the twenty channels that happened at the time in that rotation. So like it's not the last cartoon to ever air on a Saturday morning, but on those Saturday morning blocks, it was the very last one to air. Um so yeah, that's all. So, I don't know. Sorry, I think I this is <laughs> I think this is a great idea and it's so what it's just like I think the question is like, could it work? The question is will it will it grab people like the idea yeah. will work the thing is there you've cr you it, it you can put it in just go but like will it grab or will it grab people enough to that then that becomes a new avenue of like dropping your content well that it could just be question. like somebody could be like oh i really want to watch star wars today i don't know why i can never tell which star wars to watch i just throw on the star wars channel then you put it on yep. and it's like okay let's go for it and then, I, yeah, I don't know what other ones they're going to have. They'd have to have, like, I don't, because, you know, you think of all their properties. Marvel can pull it off, but, like, Planet of the Apes, what they're just going to show. I, I don't think they have a TV show, that that old TV show that no one remembers and probably are embarrassed of. So I'm going to throw that on there. There's only, like, how many movies are there? Seven movies? Ten movies? Maybe, maybe, but that's just, it just feels like, what's the point? Just have a, just have, like, that what they have now right for stuff like yeah. that so yeah i don't know what like the tv shows i think is the main one that they would right because you could put like all of i think do they should just do like a tgif all the time like just tjf always and just all those shows just on rotation forever and ever and ever and ever yeah. and ever and people i think that something like that people would would drift into i'm waiting for the kathleen kennedy channel uh she was on the apprentice and was fired <laughs> what fun by the president <laughs> by the president uh she should get fired mm -hmm. i mean um, i just like seeing people get fired <laughs> we all love to people to watch people fail it's the whole vibe that's why reality tv is so popular it's like look at that person lose their mind fun <laughs> <laughs> so. uh do you want to go to the blind rankings? Odd? or you want to do blind rankings let's do blind sure. rankings. we're gonna do star wars shows i'm gonna blind rank you star wars shows are you ready for this i don't think you are i don't think you're ready for this blind ranking bad batch bad batch let's do it bad batch what for blind ranking, we're doing shows, and Bad Batch is the first show I'm giving. No, I know. Just, oh, oh, shows. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna put it at four. Four. That's pretty high. High. <laughs> Tales of the Jedi. 
Ooh, I'm going to put that at three. Because uh, that one just made me feel feelings. I was like, yeah. Mandalorian. Number one. Obi-Wan. Gonna put it at five. I'm. Yeah. Was it called Obi? It was called Kenobi. Kenobi. Yeah, anyway, you meant. Yeah. And uh, your number two coming on the screen is Ahsoka. Ahsoka's your perfect. Sucker. And that, yeah, perfect. and you're like, that's, you are a big fan of incompletions. <laughs> the, we we did not stick the landing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Look, if that show if that show has more seasons and they pull it off, then fine. But I just think, you know, if you're gonna do a, if you're gonna make a series, you gotta have a beginning and an end at least. You know, we can forego the middle there. All right, yeah. So Mando's number one is so good. Yeah, I think that's a fine, fine ranking there. You're a known Kenobi hater. I guess you are. <laughs> you, are you were always you were always bigger on on uh, Uncle Owen. You were all, you always preferred Uncle Owen. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's. I suppose. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's, we've had. I can have the receipts. Show the receipts. <laughs> all right, here come the odds. Ability of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately three thousand seven hundred and twenty to one. Never tell me the odds. Never tell me the odds brought to you, me, and everyone who's in the chat and listening on SoundCloud and hearing from the other room in my house uh, not by Patreon.com. <laughs> not Google Podcast. Patreon.com slash Rebel Scum Podcast. If you like what we do, why don't you go over to Patreon.com slash Rebel Scum Podcast and support us in any way you can. We like talking Star Wars. We want to continue to talk Star Wars. My relationship with James hinges on the fact that we come together once a week and look at each other on a monitor. I live in the woods. Live in the woods. Uh, So please come and support us. Be one of the wonderful few we constantly shout out. And those people are Heidi Fetter, executive producer, Barry Brophy, Dennis Allen, Randy Kenobi, Mary Kristen Aton, Dale Ehrman, Phil Staniforth, Rez, Scott D., Josh Price. Matt W. Frank Perkins, Neil Lowry, Cosmic Girl Zero Two, Gleek Play One, Denna Nerds, Disney Desi, Charlotte, Ron Prezak, and Jeff Wilson. Thank you everybody for all of your support, and thank you for to Pauline for buying a hoodie uh, from RT Public Store. Oh wow! Thank you. <laughs> it, it wasn't that. <laughs> I am on it. I am on Endor. <laughs> Disney Desi says James was on the fourth move of Endor. Yeah, I, I saw that. Uh, I there are no Ewoks though. There are ticks. There are ticks. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I woke up, Rock tick crawling on my sweater when I woke up, and I was like, "You what fun? Get off of me! You get off of me! You son of a! You get I off have, me!" We have ants in our kitchen because it's that time of year where the bugs are like, "We're back, baby!" Yeah. I let my dog out to do her business last night, and a fly the size of my fist flew in my mm-hmm. house. But it like it came in. It was you know what it reminded me of? It was like Dune, like that bug thing in Dune that tries to kill Timothy Chalamet in the first Dune, the first Dune, not the second Dune, the first Dune, that little bug ant. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It was like that. Like it came in like perfectly straight line, like knew what and it and then, like it turned the corner into my house. I'm like, how do you? Mm-hmm. And this thing was a menace to kill. A menace. It like was ten. It was so big. It had, its eyes were like the size of my head. Mutant. It was super fly. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> first, our first odd. Balin's skull will not appear physically in Ahsoka season two. Balin's skull will not appear in physical form in season two of Ahsoka. I want to say thirty percent because it's uh, it's just sort of like. I know you want to be respectful to um, Ray. What was his last name? Stevens. Stevens. Right? Ray, yeah. Ray Stevens. Yeah. But at the same note, it's just like I don't know. I'd almost rather if they don't recast the character or do something with AI or something to make. I, I don't know. I just almost rather they don't make the show at all. You know what I mean? So. But that maybe that's completely insensitive. <laughs> well, here's my my only counter to that would be that character was awesome. Like we all love that character. I think that like one of the more fascinating characters. Yeah. However, 
really didn't go anywhere at the end. Just yeah. kind of like stop. <laughs> there was like an afterthought in a lot. Like, oh yeah, and him. He's around. So like, yeah. could you do the second season without Balin's skull? Maybe make a reference to skull. And then, but like Skull's story has to continue. I'm not saying it doesn't, but it doesn't necessarily have to continue in at Soka's. Yeah, no, but like the thing is, I would I agree with you, but then the last thing we see him is standing on that mortis style statue, and you're like, oh, it's just like you can't, you can't, and then like to go into the next series and not sort of deal with that, be like, come on, but I don't know. Well, they could also deal with it from afar anyway whatever i'm i'm gonna go know. what was the what was the what did, did you what did you, did you give 30 percent. i'll go full brock yeah i don't know because i'm 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 look i'm recast all I'm, I'm on the recast page all day but if he's not gonna do anything just whatever right <laughs> i'm just like i hope he i hope there's a point um, but i also hope they don't cast somebody that like is distracting if you know what i mean where they're like we're yeah. going to try to get the best the, like big actor that you love just get somebody good next odd brock never tell me the odds and or season two will be is this from last week or is it there will be stronger than season one i feel like we say this every we week i feel like we do this every week maybe i think it every week Andor. Oh, because Terry Gilliam said that Andor was a, the, like, the most important thing he's ever done or something like that. So. Mm. Uh, I'm going to go 90%. I'm pretty... I mean, you just you could just do the uh, same type of story again in that second season. I'd be like, yeah, great success. Yeah. Like, It's not hard. I don't think if they just keep the same team that made the first one, you're going to get... A, Decent product, I think, and it has the benefit of knowing where it has to go. Yeah, like, exactly. Not the benefit, right? Like, you're like, why well, we know we have to go there, so you can't get lost along the way. All right. Um, and our final odd, the act. This is uh, so Daphne Keen, I believe, is the actress's name. She said that mm-hmm. her hope that their goal or their hope is that there is a lightsaber fight in the acolyte. That is better than the Duel of the Fates lightsaber battle, which she says she believes is the best Star Wars lightsaber. So you can, you can debate what the best one. So either way, there, she's saying she's hoping that they've made something that is the best. And our, so our final odd to that point is the Acolyte will have a lightsaber fight better than Darth Maul versus Kenobi and qui Or we could just say the best in the series. I don't see why not, because the lightsaber stuff in Ahsoka was very good, but what it was missing from Duel of the Fates is, one, a really cool soundtrack, but also it's like, that duel is important. I know it's Duel of the Fates, so it has to be, but like it's like that like two-on-one Darth Maul versus Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, it had importance, because they're like, th- I mean, maybe we didn't understand this until after seeing it, but it's like, this is, this is an important part of the movie, and it's like, I don't feel like we've had a lightsaber battle that's there. Like, I guess like Ray and, uh, and what's his face? Kylo. It's like in rise of Skywalker or well, that's what it's not really the same thing. Cause they're not super long and they never have an ending. Cause you can't really kill. They really can't kill each other. It's an ongoing battle throughout all three, three films really. So it's a different thing. So, I'm. I would say just uh, to give it odd, I'd be like eighty percent because it's like the visuals are there. You just gotta write it. You just have to have real writing, not just like lightsaber battle. Like it's like why? Why are they fighting? And why is it important? Went to un- unmute myself and I hit remove video. Yeah. So. There you go. Perfect. Um, yeah, here's the thing. I feel like they could do a better one because, first of all, technology is so much better. But I just have this sense that it's going to be missing something. I don't know what it is. I feel like it's going to be sound. Um, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go 47. And I hope you know. I I do hope that we get 
the greatest lightsaber fight of all time. I hope we do, but I'm going to go 47%. Because I, I just think some of the... like I, I've been pretty critical of... I think Ahsoka kind of nailed it, if I remember correctly. But I've been critical of the lightsaber sound effects in a lot of the Disney era stuff. Because Ben Burt left and... It's been it's been too bassy. It's been missing like something that that has been there. Like, and I always go back like when Finn ignites it in the Force Force Awakens. It doesn't. It's it. Right, I remember in the theater the first time I was like, it was like oh it's missing. It doesn't have it. It's, it's too bassy. It's too clean sounding. Like they should be like and this. So I, that could be the one thing for me that's gonna separate. But I absolutely hope. That they because ha- why would we not want to be entertained? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's my thing. Right? Uh, and so in the, in the chat right now, we've got uh, uh, Disney Desi is saying Duel of the Fates is second to the Praetorian Guard fight, and Heidi mm-hmm. seconds that. Disney says that the music is what really makes Duel of the Fates. Um, and then uh, what do we got Two Inquisitors. Long, Mike. I think we're more at stake in Duel of the Fates. Yeah, and Pauline backs that up with her comment as well. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. So like, I think we all agree here. Like, there's there's just like Duel of the Fates had a whole lot of a bunch of things happening. So it's like, could be. I mean, not to go back to X Men '97, but that was a cartoon that had a whole action sequence where I was on the edge of my seat. So a live action show with a bigger budget better deliver that same vibe. Like, it's very doable. It's like. You need action. You need some thrilling yeah. vibe with what's happening on screen or music, and you gotta have stakes. So that is what makes that. So yeah. Daphne Keen better deliver on that if you want to be toe to toe with Duel of the Fates. I think that I think the problem is a lot of people are focused just on the jumping and the twists and the turns and the, and the fighting. Yeah, yeah. But it's like emotional depth is so important. Um, and that you know, it's something that um, that I think a lot of a lot of movies that I watch are like they they seem to be missing that they want to go straight for the action without earning the action. And I hope I hope this show is, but I think this show is going to end with uh, Trinity dying, or and it's going to start with Trinity dying, and that's going to be our emotional. Is it is that right? It's like that's going to trigger it all. So there'll be weight to it because of that first act. I could be way off. I could be way off, but if I'm not. You'll all be hearing about it for the weeks to come. <laughs> uh, did I give it out on that? I want 47%. Yeah. Okay. All right. Top five. Top five. Top five lightsaber fights. Why not? <laughs> Let's go with Return of the Jedi. Just that? <laughs> that specific the, part the, of Return the, of the Jedi? The ending was like... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, in my pop-up book from the 80s when you pulled the side <laughs> and, they, and Luke and Vader went like this with each other in the pop-up book. <laughs> uh, I'll go uh, just because it's been, I feel like it's been talked about a million times. We'll go Luke and Vader at Cloud City and Empire Strikes Back because obviously that's a huge, and talking about stakes, that's a huge part of the lightsaber can't battle just can't be about Pushing people, it's uh, or fighting people it should be about like well, what does this battle have to do with it? So we're I'll put it at five. It obviously should be higher, but like it's a it's a no brainer. It's going to be on the list. Uh, that is also my number four is Cloud <laughs> City. It's also I just love the moment when Vader starts ripping things off the wall and throwing them out. I mean, there's no lightsabers there, but that moment though, man, he throws things off the wall at Luke. What are the rules on this? The lightsaber battle has to have two lightsabers? Like, can I say Vader walking down the hall in Rogue One? Or is that not a lightsaber no, battle? No, it's not a lightsaber battle. Okay, fair, fair, fair. There oh, has sorry. to be, yeah, there has to be like at least a sword. And is this just movies? Or is this TV shows now as well? It's Star Wars. Uh, Yeah, anything you want. Okay, then I will throw... Uh, no, there's only one lightsaber in that one. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, you know what? I'll put uh, Obi-Wan versus Vader in in uh, Kenobi, because I'm a known hater of Kenobi. <laughs> but it's sort of like an apology 
for like the original OG Obi Wan versus Vader in New Hope, where they're still trying to figure out the technology and you see a cable. I thought that was really good, and you know you can't go wrong with Vader's mask being cracked open. You can see his face. So yeah, I'm going Mustafar number three. Mm. Um, I thought about that one, but I'm just gonna go with the the OG fight that would come next on my list if I if I have another one because I do love that the cracked mask as well. But I'm going with Mustafar. And you know what? And I'll put Mustafar there as well because one, just the memeability of that. <laughs> You are the chosen one! <laughs> Bananakin! <clears throat> ah, yeah, yeah! <laughs> My number two. Praetorian Guards. Everybody get mad. Everybody get mad in the chat. No, I think it's... I think it's an excellent choice. Because it's like... I've said it before. It's like the difference between how... Kylo Ren fights and Rey fights. It's like, oh, that's really cool. And then visually, it's just awesome. Agreed. Yeah. I'm going to go a little rogue and put... Uh, I the, said no rogue one. No rogue one. No, I'm going to go uh, Attack of the Clones uh, when they're on Geonosis and it's just the massive <laughs> Jedi versus... Nice robots and whatever in the Coliseum, like that was pretty cool. I was like, "Wow, look at all of them!" <laughs> Fantasia is gonna love you for this list. <laughs> love you. And my number one. Oh, what the! F- <laughs> it's, it's, it's Duel of the Fates. It's Duel. Duel of the, of the Fates. Dun, 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 dun. Wah, 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 wah. I mean, you know what? maybe the music does make it, but that music is awesome. Yeah, okay, absolutely. And they go, they go from like a palace to a Star Wars room. To, like, is like, there's no other way to describe that room other than a Star Wars room. Ba, 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 da. <laughs> Here's a hole in the ground. There is no railing. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Disney Desi is very mad that the Praetorian Guards aren't on this, on both, or higher on the list. I don't know. I never understand what she's mad about. It was on James's list. What else do you need? <laughs> Second on my list. Second's pretty good for... Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> I'm hoping that the Disney Plus has a Praetorian Guard channel. <laughs> Oh my gosh! It's just that scene, and then that scene from from Mando. And and it's, it's like it's uh yeah, it's just that scene for an hour a day, and then the other twenty three hours is just somebody saying like, "Why couldn't the Knights of Ren just be the Praetorian Guards or Praetorian Guards be the Knights of Ren?" And just talks about that for twenty three hours. You're like, "Wow." <laughs> They've got a point. <laughs> uh, but anyways so I thought that was a pretty good list and I stand by it boom I'm printing mine and then framing it <laughs> imagine you printed all your top five for the last five years and that's just like just a wall behind you that's why you have a virtual display at all times <laughs> I don't want anyone to know no one can know my top fives Never. All right. Let's wrap it up. Brock, anything else you want to say? Uh, no. Um, watch X Men 97. Okay. Yeah. Because, you know, they're hurting for years. Nobody's watching that show. <laughs> I wonder what the, the viewership is like on it. I, yeah. I, I would love to understand any of the ratings or viewership or. What is it? Ratings when people watch? I can't remember. On T, like, how do they gauge anything on that thing? <laughs> they they have they have some way of knowing. That's why they quietly cancel shows and delete them off of the um, delete them off. Nobody knows. Jeff Goldblum got erased, man. Yeah, that's huge. I wonder if people found out if they would hate Disney because nobody hates Disney, right? Yeah. 
No, but not a single person. <laughs> there was a they were they were on a good run though, where people loved Disney. What was it like Iron Man until Last Jedi? It was like eight years. That's a good turn. That's a great run for people yep. who like love like people have like people love Disney. Like Disney does he hates Disney. <laughs> <laughs> but like but people literally like Disney can't do any wrong. And then the last Jedi came out and it was like, woke garbage. It was, like, it was just like this total like 180. You're like, what happened? And then like <laughs> then they turned on Marvel after like it took them a few years, like five years. They're like, Marvel, we're coming for you. What do you got after Endgame? Nothing good? Guess what? Woke garbage. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> calm down, man. Yeah. But that's a that's a great run from any company to have a like a loyal yeah. fan base for eight years. Like I don't think they did anything wrong for eight years. Oh, they canceled the Clone Wars, but then people kind of got over it because Rebels ended up being so good. Like that was a great stretch. Yeah, and like all the projects in the I think made like a close to a billion dollars. So it's like who's the winner here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Solo was the only one that. I really want to know what they lost on Solo. You know they lost money on Solo, like a lot of mm. money on Solo. And I want to know what it was, because I need to know. Otherwise, I can't sleep at night. <laughs> I can't breathe living this, living this without Solo. <laughs> I like Solo. Uh, yeah. um, Pauline liked Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I haven't seen Part 3 yet. I feel like I should have, but I just haven't. I would not show that to Aaron because Aaron is an animal lover and it will probably trigger her. You know what's funny is I actually, I think you told me that before and I was going to watch it and I was like, yeah, I'll suggest a different movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we watched, what did we watch? <laughs> was it the Godzilla show where a horse dies? No. Was it Godzilla? Maybe. Was it? That sounds a horse. A horse died very early on in something she's like i can't watch this i'm like no it was napoleon what am i saying <laughs> we got like i think it was napoleon i think we got like 10 minutes into napoleon and i said you know what this is three hours i'm not sure i could do this <laughs> you're not even watching new anything new you're just watching never-ending story where like our tax just, goes down in the, oh my yeah. god <laughs> yo that scene man yeah that's a there's yeah. there is like they don't See, this is one thing I will say about kids' movies today. Not all, like there's different there's different levels of kids' movies, but man, they need to bring that dark crap back for kids. Kids oh, need yeah. to like sit and cry on the couch and be like, "Oh, oh, what? Maybe I don't need an iPhone." Even though they do. <laughs> it's like, what are you seven? Here, watch Black Crystal. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I guess I told my dad. My dad didn't believe him. Like, yeah, you woke me up when I was like eight to watch Die Hard. He goes, "No, I didn't." I'm like, Mm-mm. "Yeah." How do you think I watched it? You guys <laughs> taped the second one for me. <laughs> My parents let me stay up and watch Terminator while they both fell asleep. <laughs> the original Terminator. <laughs> the same with Blade Runner. They're like, you brought this into the house. <laughs> I just sat there and be like, what? This is great. <laughs> We watched more. Yeah, the eighty, the eighties, and like early. It was a wild time. I remember my mom rented Child's Play three for me when I was like ten or eleven. I'm like, Mom, I want to watch Child's Play three. I've never seen a Child's Play at this point, but I was like, I need to watch the third one, Mom. She's like, Why? I'm like, Because it's Chucky. She's like, Okay. <laughs> she rented I me saw Chucky. that jumbo video. <laughs> I no, I remember. I remember. Um, because the first one came out when I think like, everyone knew Chucky. Like, it was Chucky, Freddy, and Jason were like in the eighties. And then Michael Myers, but like, but the second one, and the third one came out like back to back, if I remember correctly. And the third one, they were like really pushing. It was on like commercials for it were in front of everything after like <laughs> four p.m. So like every kid was like, "What?" Like some kids were people, were, parents were. I remember parents complaining to parents of like the baseball diamond. Like my daughter just saw the Chucky trailer. The cover it was in trailer back then. It was commercial. Like they saw the Chucky commercial, and now she can't sleep at night. And I'd be like, Chucky, 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 Chucky. That's what I know. My mom ran to me, Chucky. And I was like, 11 years old. I'm like, what is happening? I'm thinking now, I'm like, I would never do that, mom. Yeah. She's like, yeah, you know, it was a different time. We didn't care. <laughs> right? and she watched it. She watched it with me. And we laughed the whole like hour and a half or whatever. Like, we laughed the whole time. And like, then we, then she's like, predicting. She's like, well, I, that person's going to die. And then I'm like, what is happening here, mom? <laughs> and yes, my mom is the writer of Child's Play 3. 
<laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh, wait, what's one of your favorite release Scott films? Is it Napoleon? I only watched the first five minutes, and I was like, it's almost three hours, and I wasn't, I was tired. Yeah. Uh, no, Heidi. The first comedy ones were um, Bride of like Chucky's when they Bride started turning Chucky. into comedy. Yeah, three was like. I don't know. Three. I mean, they always had jokes because Chucky was um, worm tongue from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, what's that guy's name? But uh, yeah, what is his name? I can't remember his name now. He's good though. He's really good at Chucky. It's funny that he's a he possesses a doll. Is what's funny about it. He possesses a doll. But yeah, you're looking at. His, I, I want to know what his name is. I can't remember. I can't think of it right now. Brad Dorf. Brad Dorf. Yeah, yeah, great. That is an '80s action star. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching, Brock. For real, anything else this time, or are you all good? No, I got nothing. <laughs> That's good because you were always gum. Rebel scum. Gum bags, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.